I saw this clip on social media, right? That features Pausa, the DJ, the tech house DJ, the DJ Supremo, the, the producer, also a colleague of, um, what's his face? Uh, Michael Bibby. They're under the same label and stuff, and he does his own thing as well. So Pausa's having a good, I think, what, two years or so. He's been killing the productions. Um, I think, what, what was his late, latest tune I've been banging? I think it's Pick Up The Phone. I fucking love that. I've been playing that a lot. Um, but just in general, you know, sick DJ, sick productions, and it seems like a good egg as well. Um, always a good, happy vibe behind the, behind the decks. And, you know, being a mixed race dude as well, it's nice to see somebody that isn't just white and looks a particular way playing behind the decks, you know. No racismo there, but you know how it is. It's just the same old people sometimes, so it's nice. Anyway, long story less long, somebody posted this picture or somebody posted this video clip on social media that features Pausa playing at Club Space in Miami. And it says the caption, take note guys, this guy plays with a pic of his wife next to him. So allegedly when Pausa's playing, he has a framed picture of his lovely wife by the side of his decks as he's playing. Pretty sick, because if you know anything about the Tech House lot, if you know anything about the club space miami lot if you know anything about the fuse lot right all of those guys in that space they are you know there's a lot of weirdly enough i don't know why in particular but there's a lot more girls that go to tech house raves than i think any other genre maybe apart from edm especially in the hetero world there's a lot of like pretty ladies so you'd imagine if you're a successful dj it's probably very difficult to resist the temptation when you're flying to all these different locations around the world and very attractive young ladies are throwing themselves at you because they like that song that you produced or they like the fact that you're very famous and they can get in the booth and stuff wherever it may be so this is pretty refreshing to see a dj who's you know a grown-up and um is respectful is respectful of their partner or their wife their girlfriend and has a picture of them <laughs> by the decks as they're playing almost as a way to kind of acknowledge that hey i love you and i miss you but also as a way to kind of like warn the girls because you know some girls you could tell them hey i'm, I'm taken they're not going to listen but if they see a picture even the most duplicitous even the most whorish of ladies will think twice about trying to like touch you in the small of your back right about trying to lean in and be all flirty if they see that they're going to feel a little bit guilty if they see a smiling picture of your wife's face on the deck they're going to feel a little bit bad and you also may feel a little bit of hesitancy, of resistance to maybe try and finger bang somebody behind the booth if you have a picture of your wife smiling there looking at you as you're playing, right? Right. But it does rem it does remind me of this clip of John Summit when he was on, um, what do you call it? Uh, I forgot the podcast with fucking whether the Nelk boys are, talking about relationships and DJing. And it, it was always rung in my head because I was thinking, rah, man. I wonder if what he was saying was true because there's always something that's been, you know, reverberating in my head, thinking like, I wonder what the partners and the wives and girlfriends of DJs must think when they see clips like this. Were you pulling the way you were when you were a CPA? <laughs> Probably not, right? Uh, when I was a CPA, I had a, I had a girlfriend and stuff. And then as, as soon as, uh, you know, I went full-time DJ, I'm like, that's not working out. <laughs> it's pretty impossible to have a relationship with what you do. No, it's impossible. Every, I mean, I can't really say too much, but I, I know I would not trust any DJ, to be honest. Do you hear that? Let me rewind it once again. Once again, when Steiny asks the question. Let's go back once more time. Were you pulling the way you were when you were a CPA? Probably not, right? <laughs> uh, when I was a CPA, I had a, I had a girlfriend and stuff. And then as, as soon as uh, you know, went full-time DJ, I'm like, that's not working out. <laughs> it's pretty impossible to have a relationship with what you do. No, it's impossible. Every, I mean, I can't really say too much, but I, I, know, I would not trust any DJ, to be honest. The guy says it's pretty difficult. He says, no, it's impossible. <laughs> it's pretty difficult to have a, have a relationship with a, as a professional DJ. Well, you know, and he says, no, it's impossible. And the reality of it is probably true. But I think it probably must get easier the older you get. Because I remember when I was first getting into dance music electronic music and i was really really active in the scene and shit some of my heroes i was looking up to at the time were people like seth Troxler and stuff even people like jack master whatever those people i was looking up to jamie joneses and stuff um richie ahmed um i forgot a bunch of people in that kind of crew right and i remember early on seth Troxler at the time was like a superstar dj he was everywhere mad interviews some of the most legendary dj interviews from back in the day was surf trucks are kind of like off his face wearing a tiny tiny flipping speedo talking about the scene and playing and all this malarkey and i remember around that time he was actually engaged to the sister of somebody that i knew at the time in the scene 
like this girl that I knew. I, I wonder, I have no idea where she is at the moment, but this girl that I remember that I kind of knew from back in the day in the scene, her sister was engaged to Seth Troxler. So she used to always, you know, I was obsessed with the scene and stuff. So I'd always be kind of chewing her ear off about it. And she would always tell me stories about him and stuff. And oh my God, how cool it was. They went there, they went there, blah, blah, blah. But over time, they ended up, you know, breaking up and the engagement kind of broke off. And I remember at the time she was telling us, and he was obviously saying himself, Seth Troxler, how negatively that breakup of the engagement affected him like properly and it made him kind of realize oh shit i don't have time for people and i think you know a, a couple of deaths as well occurred at the time when he was really kind of popping off that he couldn't really acknowledge or kind of go to the funerals and shit because he was on tour and stuff and you know missing out on a lot of stuff that happened with your friends because i imagine it's difficult it's probably easier for me because i don't really have a big social circle so when i when i do become like a professional dj i'm not really gonna you know what i won't i won't be i won't really re be missing much because i don't really take part in people's lives nowadays but i think if you do have a friendship group going on tour for countless amounts of time and then coming back and you know finding out this person's dead that person got engaged that person had kid is now seven you know you feel like you've missed out on so much so you can only imagine what it must be like for the girlfriends and for the fiancés and stuff right to be just sitting at home waiting for your guy to come back because i think part of me would think oh why don't you just work for them and go on the road with them but i could imagine like maybe people are different out there but if i were when I become a professional DJ, I don't want somebody that's involved in the scene. Never do. I never have. Even when I was involved in fashion, I was involved in streetwear, I was balls into fucking sneakers and shit. I've never really been into the whole like having with being with somebody that's also super into the same thing that you're into. It can happen, fair, but it's not something I'm chasing. Because I always thought it was cringe. When I was when I was first getting into like metal and stuff and going to like hardcore shows and like, you know, camden and dawson all that stuff back in the day i used to get really pissed off and i think it's a really kind of it's, it's probably a lot of like you know um trauma and annoyance about my kind of come up because when i was going to these things i was going to i don't know when i'd go to like download festival going to these type of things i'd get really annoyed when i'd be going to these events or these festivals or you know go and see bands play like ghosts and whatnot and whatever and people will be looking at you or be talking to you like you don't know what you're talking about or that you haven't got any knowledge of what they're into because you don't look the part because I'm not rocking up in there in New York boots and studded belts and band t-shirts all cut up and whatever. They just think you're not involved. They just think you don't know what's going on. But it's like, why can I not just like the music? Why do I have to look like this, you know, just to enjoy the music? And I always thought it was really cringe when you go to these events and you see couples, you see like a guy and a girl, you know, clearly looking like they're emo. Like, it's like, why, you know? Why is that the, like, is that, is that, is that the only criteria you have? You both have to be into like my bloody Valentine to like, you know, to go out with each other. It's like not not for me. So I'm never really like that. So I could imagine if you're the girlfriend or the wife of a DJ, the last thing you want to do, and even if you're into the scene, there's probably no more boring place to be for a girlfriend, wife, husband, boyfriend than to be waiting for somebody to finish their DJ set in a DJ booth. If you're not interested. It's so boring. I could just imagine it. For, for us civilians and pedestrians, being in a DJ booth is like being in a VIP space. You get to hang around. You maybe get some drinks. You might get some drugs. You maybe connect, network, all this malarkey. But I think if you're a you know family member, close friend, in a relationship with this person, it must get boring because you're going to all these places, all the same to you. Don't give a fuck. And you're just waiting for it to be over. You're just waiting to go back to the hotel. You're waiting to go get some dinner. You just don't, you want to you go get into bed. You don't want to be here. So I can only imagine how boring it must be to be in a booth if you're not playing and to also go on tour if you're not really involved. So you'd prefer to stay at home. But if you're staying at home, you can't keep your eye on your guy. And then if he, you know, if there's no one to keep his eye on him, and I don't know about you, but, you know, look at some DJs. I'm, I'm you know, I'm obsessed with the scene. So I'm always fucking, I'm a weirdo. I'm always checking fucking RA in different locations. And I'll just randomly check, I don't know, LA, I'll randomly check Berlin, randomly check Amsterdam, you know, whatever. I'll randomly check Australia and just see what people are playing and stuff. And you'll see the list and some of the places they're playing, random clubs. A lot of DJs basically make up, from what I've been able to see, make their money just playing in random places for the most part. Because those are the ones that book you more consistently than the big places because they have to cycle through more DJs. But some of those places they're playing at, you never see pictures of them playing there. It's just like a random club somewhere, I don't know, in Budapest, right? A random place somewhere in Poland a random place somewhere in Austria, those type of places that you're going to, those will be the places where adultery might happen because there's really no one to kind of, you know, 
to see what's going on there you don't know anybody you could just kind of do what you want to do there so it must be incredibly difficult incredibly difficult to keep relationships solid the divorce breakup rates in dance music must be crazy no one's gonna you know put the statistics together but I've, I've the numbers must be sky high which also now i'm saying this aloud this also might explain why a lot of djs do end up hooking up with a lot of people in the industry or other fellow djs because at least then you both know what comes with it right there's no having to explain you both get it there's no you know there's not as much pressure as kind of being in relationship with like a regular civilian that probably explains a lot of it but i'd imagine dating somebody in the industry kids also you know there's also a lot of toxicity involved there especially imagine if you're maybe more popular and that person isn't maybe getting as many gigs if it was me though and i was dating somebody that was wanting to be a dj and i was really popping i'll just bring them along with me as my opener fuck it i'll just enforce it in my contract I'm, i know most people don't do that and it's probably going to be hard to do it but i'll just do it rago <laughs> if you want to book me you have to book my wife you know fuck it <laughs> that's the best way to do it you know what i mean fuck it but i'd imagine after a while she'll probably get bored and pissed off that shit why do i have to open for why do i have to open why can't you open for a change it's like bro i'm the one getting booked and then here we go we start a new fight so um it's a mad one it's a mad one but big up pausa though for representing for all the devoted good husbands and boyfriends out there big up him for showing that there is you know basically bucking the trend and proving john summit incorrect that there are some good guys out there who are solid who do hold down their wifeys who can go ibiza who can go to berlin who can go to amsterdam who can go to all these places and rave and not do anything dumb when they got missus at home personally for me I've never understood people who go out with a sole intention to try and fuck anyway. I think dance music scene, electronic music scene is way more enjoyable when you go out and try and be sociable, when you go out and try and just have fun, listen to great music, maybe just experience the ambiance of the club, blah, 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 even networking. I think it's way more fun than trying to be a pussyhound in a club. I think that's lame, personally, for me. And I think it's way funner as well if you're able to go to clubs and meet girls and they be part of your fucking social group. They just go hang out with, just go and party with. That's actually kind of cool. They're just your rave mates, you know what I mean? But that can only happen if you go there with like the best intentions and not just frothing at the mouth because somebody's wearing a short skirt. Like it's never that deep. It's never that deep, really. And um, I've had way more, in my personal opinion, I've had way more fun experiences raving when I've just gone there to just rave and have a good time than I've gone there like, op like hoping something's going to pop off. Like, oh my God, man, I am so horny. It's like, that, that doesn't work, you know? And what one thing we know women to be is very uh, perceptive, you know what I mean? If you're if you're thirsty, thirsty, and you're hungry, hungry, they're gonna smell that from a mile off anyway, so it's not gonna help you. So you're better off just going there and going to dance, in my personal opinion. But again, what do I know? Because I'm a bloody idiot. I don't know anything. So don't listen to me. Don't listen to me. Don't listen to me.